Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is the Global Watch International Prayer Room. We're so glad that you're here. This is April the 26th, 2024. It is 5 p.m. Jerusalem time. And you know that today it just really kind of hits me after all that we've been sharing um, of what is taking place in Jerusalem as those tables are being set and the families are being called to their tables being ready for lighting of the candles and the blessings and how that they bless one another. Fathers bless the mothers and the mothers bless the fathers and the children bless one another. So Father, I pray thanking you for this day, this call and this hour and for the table that you set for your people, even in the presence of our enemies. And Lord, we thank you for such a time as this that each and everyone is on this call. I ask, Lord, that you would anoint Hillary to bring forth what you have put within her heart. And Lord, that each and every one of us would be fully participating, Lord. And we just thank you and praise you for your spirit. And we ask that you, Holy Spirit of the living God, who does help us to separate the holy from the mundane in the weak. Lord, as this time is set apart holy unto you, that, Lord, you would help us to truly enter into your rest and your restoration, even from those things that we've walked through in this week, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And over to you, Hillary. Thank you so much. And God bless you all. What an amazing God we have. We're living in set times, as we've said. And uh, God has got a plan. And I've got a... Um, a list of declarations that God gave us here down under on our Anzac Day when we have a celebration on the 25th of April about the breakthrough at Beersheba and the taking back of the wells and the nation of Israel from under Islamic oppression, which is the exact opposite spirit of what's going on at the moment. So I want to say, praise the Lord. He sent some troops up to us here in Canberra, in our capital city, from, a, um, from the border of Victoria, actually. And uh, God then had me go down there. It's been a, a military assignment. And what ended up happening was the establishing of a messianic congregation on the Saturday. And that's been in process since 2011. And I say, praise the Lord. And the presence of God was absolutely glorious. And I believe this is part of the pattern of the restoration of all things. And then we had um, that the properly organized Passover didn't come off, that there was a whole mess up with catering and one thing after another. And so the Lord just put it into my heart with this precious messianic leader. Um, quite honestly, we're all on our knees on the floor. God's had us Australia kneeling for the last 18 months. And I, I got this picture of Hezekiah's Passover that, as you probably remember, in 2 Chronicles 30, was really quite a mess. And what happened was that the, they missed it the first um, time of the Passover. So they were going to do it in the second month. And Hezekiah sent out the invitation. And there was a lot of mockery and negativity and people didn't come. And then those who did come, they didn't get themselves properly consecrated and cleaned up. But they sat down to eat anyway. <laughs> and I just thought, Lord... You're wanting us to be prepared for things that are not properly in order. And it's just so precious. Um, we're told here in 2 Chronicles 30 that um, Hezekiah put this word out to the people. If you return to Yahweh, your God, your brethren, your children will be treated with compassion by those who lead them captive. Um, so that they may come back to this land for Yahweh your God is gracious and merciful, will not turn his face from you if you return to him. So this call to repentance. And so the runners went out with this invitation and they met the uh, people from the country of Ephraim, Manasseh, as far as Zebulun, who laughed at them and just mocked at them. 
Nevertheless, some from Asher, Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. And I love verse 12. Also, the hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart to obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of the Lord. I want to speak this over Israel today. I want to speak this over the hearts of these dear ones gathering for their Shabbat. I want to say, Heavenly Father, have your way. Bring this singleness of heart and purpose. It also speaks of this in Jeremiah 32, verses um, 38 to 40. And in verse 39, he says that, that God put the reverential fear of the Lord upon his people. And that they would walk in one way with one heart and that their generations and descendants after them would know the Lord. And then he says he would put his fear upon them and they would not backslide from him. So this is my prayer for this move of the Holy Spirit and salvation in Israel and across the nations as the chaos is increasing that the Shalom Prince of Peace will stand in his divine authority to bring his reordering, realignments, and kingdom advancement into what has become a complete apostasy. So, Father, we thank you. It didn't stop there, that uh, many of the people were supposed to um, sanctify themselves, and they didn't, and they sat down, and they ate the lamb, and Hezekiah, he didn't give up. He prayed for them, saying to the Lord, may the good Lord, this is from verse 18, provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek God. The Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And verse 20, Yahweh the Lord listened to Hezekiah and he healed the people. Praise the Lord. I speak this healing, Heavenly Father, into the broken hearts, into those who are traumatized, into those, Lord, who are giving up hope and have no sense of purpose or future. We say thank you that we, as your uh, believers and messianic believers, as the one new man company, come before your throne of grace today crying out for your mercy in your, our time of need and the time of Israel's deep, deep need, the time of your Jewish people across the nations, so many who are so far, far away. And I stand in the gap and I say, Father, forgive me, forgive my people for where we have so dishonored you, we've mocked you, just even as this scripture said. And Father, this spirit that even... You allowed your son Jesus to encounter on the cross, on the one side, mockery and complete disrespect and dishonor, and on the other side, but one who recognized you were holy, the son of God, you were without sin. And Father, we thank you for this divine shift of revelation in the name of Yeshua at these Passover um, Shabbat tables and we say Father bring your shalom peace into these households even in the midst of chaos bring your shalom peace into each one of our hearts I pray today and that Father as we listen to this beautiful worship song we will worship you we will praise you and first of all Shirley if you'd be kind enough to get the first one lined up I'd just like to read to you um, Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to Yahweh. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For Yahweh is the great God and the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, and for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Yahweh, our maker, for he is our God, 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And you speak to us, I believe, today, Father, as you speak to Israel. Today, if you will hear his voice, the good shepherd's voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. And we say, Heavenly Father, in your great mercy, would you move? Would you bring a divine shift in people's hearts, circumcision of hearts, in whatever way you need to do it, in every one of our nations? And we most particularly lift up Israel today and your Jewish people. That, Father, there will be as many as possible who would desire to listen to your voice in Jesus' name. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your arms are always open wide. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We're without excuse when we look at how wonderfully and gloriously you've created your creation and fearfully and wonderfully made you've created us to be your image bearers. And Father, I want to ask for you to take us a journey from the wilderness, Lord, into the glory. And beloved, I'd love us to look together. I wonder if somebody would read for us. Bill, would you be willing to read for me, please? From um, Numbers 14. It was like when they, they had come out of the trauma of the Passover and the Egyptians behind them, they crossed the Red Sea. And we're just going to have a look at what God noticed about Caleb's spirit and what God is calling forth for us, I believe, in these days we're finding ourselves in. Would you be kind enough to read from 11, please, through to 11 and 12, and Moses' discussion with God all the way through to 25. Thank you. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me in spite of all the signs that I have done among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. But Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear of it. For you brought up this people in your might from among them. And they will tell the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people, for you, O Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands over them. And you, did you want me to only start out with two verses? No, no, please go through. If you're happy, just if you'd be happy to read it through. Sure, I can. Um, um, so I, it, it's like, that your, you, Lord, are seen face to face and your cloud stands above them and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So this is what I wanted us to see. God has never left his people. He's there in the midst, isn't he? And there were so few who actually were tuned in to his presence. Yeah. So Moses said, you know, to God, if you're going to kill people, what are they going to think about you, etc. And then he said, and now I pray, let the power of the Lord be great. This is verse 17. Just as you've spoken, saying the Lord is long suffering. This is what we pray for for Israel. Amen. Would you like to read from 18, please, through to um, 24, certainly. Is that okay, Bill? Thank you. Certainly. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving 
iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation. Please pardon the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. None of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet have put me to the test these ten times and have not obeyed my voice shall see the land that I swore to give to their fathers. And none of those who despised me shall see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. Amen. Isn't this an awesome encouragement to us? Really, Moses was the intercessor. He stood between the devastation of his people. And I believe this is what God is calling us to be raising up into this realm of authority where we truly can discuss these matters with God and say, this is not going to make you look good, God, seriously. And, uh, and to remind the Lord, even as Abraham did. My version says, the Lord is long-suffering, my goodness, and abundant in mercy. And we pray this today with all that's going on, all these delays that we're listening to this voice and that voice and the other instead of listening to the voice of the Lord. And I think this is the clarity of what the Lord's just really given me, is that the simplicity of the original covenant requirement was to hear his voice, to heed it, and to do it. <laughs> that's, that's what he's looking for. A people who would desire to do that as the priority of their lives. But it's interesting, he's saying, this is what he had spoken in Exodus 20 as well. He will not clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity on the, of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. So I believe we're also interceding and standing the gap like Daniel did, like Nehemiah did, for the sins of the generations, the sins of the forefathers. That, Father, these younger generation, they're reaping and what was sown way before them. And so when Moses asked for this pardon, I'm sensing, and I pray this, on the Shabbat, we can come to the Isaiah 55 river and drink. And God spoke through Isaiah many hundreds of years later, come to me. And, and seek me while I may be found, as we're sensing this time is speeding up, and this time of heart circumcision. I believe the Lord's standing with his arms wide open and saying, come to me, seek me, bring your wicked thoughts and evil ways. I'm so willing to pardon you. And we've got Hezekiah crying out, will you pardon these people? Will you atone for them? And God says, yes, and I'll heal them all. <laughs> we've got so much authority in the Lord to come before and stand in the gap on behalf of our people. And the Lord's just been really stirring me that he's wanting to us to rise up as his royal priesthood and to be bold and to come before his throne of grace for the sake of the Lord's name. And this is what Moses did. And then we're finding that God gives this amazing um promise in verse 20 i have i have pardoned according to your word praise the lord and i pray we can be encouraged and the lord says but truly this is the first time he speaks it i can't remember how many times through the bible he says it as, as i live he says i'm the living god all the earth shall be filled with the glory of yahweh the lord and you know when um, that actually the last time I think we find it is in the book of Revelation 18 
when Babylon's fallen, it says the whole earth is illuminated with his glory before the coming of the king. It's so powerful. So this is what um, that God was just so dis distressed. They, he said they tested him, his people, 10 times and not heeded his voice. So if we want to know what ticks off God, it's to really be rebellious, defiant, speak negative words. We know what he said about the spies when they, 10 of them went in with that negative mindset. And he said, this is an evil report. But there were two who had a righteous report of the younger generation who went in. And they were the older ones that was Joshua and Caleb. And we find what God loved about Caleb right here. And I believe we can pray this in. Pray this into our families, pray this into our own hearts and our nations. But he says, um, so that the older generation, these ones who've broken covenant with him, um, he said, they've rejected me and they will not see my promised land. But my servant Caleb, because he's got a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, you know, I asked the Lord about this one day and I felt he said to me, he looks up, he sees my cloud and then he looks up at night and he sees my fire and somehow he got earplugs in and he didn't hear all this grumbling and muttering and get in a bad mood. He managed to somehow keep his heart on the Lord, keep focused. And he said to Caleb, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. So if we're calling forth this generation with one single heart that will be able to understand the, the love and the passion and the desire of the Lord for our children and children's children to know him, to know how to hear his voice, to know how to heed it, and to, to not give in to the flesh, but to walk by the spirit. I pray for this, for this younger generation in Israel. They would come to the end of all these lies and deceptions. They would come to the place, Lord, of such, such a hunger and thirst for your truth and your righteousness. And I really believe the Lord saying the weapons of our warfare really are to stand as his priesthood between the living and the dead and to wield the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And we, we went through 42 days leading up to the resurrection. And the Lord said, keep going for another 50. So it'll be 92 days by the time we get to Pentecost. Praise God. And this 50 days, he's having us looking, who is Messiah? Who did he say he was in John's gospel? The seven I am's and so much more. And it's just been such a breakthrough and such a revelation, honestly. And I just pray for all of us. We can go back to these basics and ask Jesus, how can I stand in these days and not get overwhelmed by the news? But we, we could we whiz now through to um, Hebrews 3, where we find what was mentioned in, in Psalm 95 about this generation whose hearts went astray from the Lord and then we see what the Lord says to them. He says, you know what? Um, where shall we start? He says here, um, today, verse 15 of Hebrews 3. If you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Now, this is to, I believe, the Jews who had become Messianic believers, then the persecution was so intensified and many of them actually fell away. And this is the Lord speaking through the writers of the Hebrews, hey, don't be like that previous generation. And I believe he's saying that to us today, for us to not fall away, to not distrust the word of the Lord. Because he said, for who having heard rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom he was angry, 40 years, was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? 
but to those who did not obey. So I pray for obedient hearts. I pray for the fear of the Lord upon every one of us and upon this generation. And he said that they could not enter his rest because of unbelief. Therefore, verse chapter four of Hebrews one and two, since a promise remains of entering his rest, and we're here on the Shabbat, this is his rest that he's welcomed us to enter into. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they did not heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Verse three, and we who have believed do enter that rest. And when I've looked through this whole um, understanding of Jesus being the bread of life, he was constantly saying, will you believe or not? And it's the same message over and over again. And so I pray that God would bring us to the place where he could truly entrust us to be what Jesus actually spoke to John on the island of Patmos. And he said in um, verse 5 and 6 of Revelation 1, this was his speaking to his, his new covenant church. He said that I am the faithful witness. I am the firstborn from the dead. And this is what we're going to explore in a moment. And the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I believe he's calling us up into this call of being his priests and to be his kings in these days of declaration and proclamation and to stand in on his word. And we also find in the um, throne room of, as those who are looking upon the lamb who was slain. And they speak in, he, in Re Revelation 5, 9 and 10. You are worthy to take the scroll. This is their new song to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. And I believe this reigning and ruling with the Lord is not just when he comes back and, and fetches us up and we return with him, but it's now right in these troubled times. And so I just praise God and I, I thank the Lord that he's got an awesome plan for us. And I would like us to uh, please get our communion um, ready. I know we have done communion, but I would love to um, speak the priestly prayer of blessing, because I think that's what the Lord's saying. With all this cursing and chaos going around, the priests were called to speak the blessing, yeah? And I wonder, Tim Wilson, if you got your Bible open, can I call on you to read the Numbers 6 blessing from um, 22, please, through to 27? And then I'm going to unpack it a little further. And then I'd love us to have our communion. And if you'd be kind enough, Shirley, after we've had communion to put on the next song, that'd be great. Thank you. Were you asking me to do the... Um, I lesson? asked Tim, actually. Tim, could you unmute, please? Tim. Tim. Is that possible? It's taken me that long awesome. just to find it. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so Are much. Are ready to go? Yeah. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you 
and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And so this is obviously after Mount Sinai. This is the beginning of the Lord. I, I, I didn't actually ha have us read it, but if you remember before he gave the Ten Commandments, um, he spoke to his people and he said, sorry, he spoke to Moses to speak to the people um, from Exodus 19, four to six. He said, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So we can see this theme from the beginning to the end. That surely was Exodus 19, 4 to 6. So God has had this passion, not only for his um, people of Israel, but we also will look at it later in 1 Peter chapter 2. This is the calling of God upon us as his people to be a priesthood as things get darker and darker, to be ministering to God and ministering to others. So I would love to read to you from the Priestly Prayer of Blessing by Warren M. Marcus as he's looked into a lot of the different meanings of what these words mean. And he starts and he says, the Lord bless you. And his expanded revelation of this from the words and the um, translation of the Hebrew. May Yahweh kneel before you, making himself available to you as your heavenly father. So he can grant or bestow upon you his promises and gifts. In the first portion of the priestly prayer of the blessing, Yahweh kneels in front of you. His spiritual son or daughter, as a good parent, desiring to make himself available and to minister to you. This requires a response. Do you keep standing or do you humble yourself and kneel in front of him? where it says the Lord bless you and keep you. The expanded version says, may Yahweh, your heavenly father, guard you with a hedge of thorny protection that will prevent Satan and all your enemies from harming your body, soul, mind, and spirit, your loved ones, and all your possessions. I pray this over all of us as we pray it over the Jewish people around the world and in Israel at their Shabbat tables. Where in this second portion, our heavenly father places his arms around you with a divine embrace, holding you in his strong arms, his arms of protection and security. Where, where it speaks the Lord, his face to shine upon you, the expanded version says, may Yahweh, your heavenly father, illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, continually bringing you to order so that you will fulfill your God-given destiny and purpose. I pray this blessing upon you. In this portion of the priestly prayer of the blessing, it's as if he loosens his divine embrace and while still keeping his holy hands upon your shoulders, he pulls away enough for you to see him face to face. So you can begin to, his ex to experience his reality and person. And where it says, and he desires to be gracious to you. The expanded expression is, may Yahweh, your heavenly father, provide you with perfect love and fellowship, never leaving you and giving you sustenance, provision and friendship. Your heavenly father reveals his perfect love to you as your perfect daddy with loving eyes and a beautiful smile. He looks past your weaknesses and your frailties, 
pledging that he will never leave you, that he will provide you with his love, fellowship and friendship. It is your heavenly father saying to you, you are my beloved son or daughter in whom I am well pleased. Where the Lord says he will lift his countenance upon you. Here in the expanded version, he says, may Yahweh, your heavenly father, lift up and carry his fullness of being towards you, bringing everything that he is and has to your aid, supporting you with his divine embrace and his entire being. This is your heavenly father lifting you up with his divine strong arms and carrying you continually, looking down at you as he walks. He is your loving heavenly father. He is also lifting up all of who he is towards you. He's putting all of himself at your disposal. He is bringing everything that he is to your aid. He is supporting you with his entire being. Nothing is being withheld. You have the one true God of the universe on your side. And where he says he will give you peace. In the expanded version, he speaks, May Yahweh, your heavenly father, set in place all you need to be whole and complete so you can walk in victory moment by moment by the power of the Holy Spirit. May he give you supernatural health, peace, welfare, safety, soundness, tranquility, prosperity, perfection, fullness, rest, and harmony, as well as the absence of agitation and discord. I pray this blessing upon you all and my people, Israel. And we say, Heavenly Father, may we know you as our Heavenly Father. May we come to understand this is who you are, our constant, ever-present help in time of trouble. So when we see and hear of all these troubles in the earth, we will be able to stay in not just the cleft of the rock, but in your loving arms, knowing we are truly safe. You are the Lord, our shepherd. You are our good shepherd. And you know exactly what we need at any moment, whether we're in a delay and a holding pattern or whether we're racing ahead because suddenly it's time to move. Lord, thank you for this assurance for each one of our faith that we truly tonight on the Shabbat can enter into your rest fully, I pray in Yeshua's name. Thank you. Now what I would love to do is to um, ask someone, Molly, are you there? Would you be kind enough to unmute and read for us from John's Gospel, chapter 6? And start at verse 35. Okay. I'm going to do John and then, 6. Yes. And then when you've read about Jesus saying that he is the bread of life, we'll take the body of Christ. Okay. And that'll be when we come down to um, 48, probably around there, when he speaks, or maybe a bit further on. Sorry, 53. So how about you go for it from 35? Right. Okay. Um, and if you, if you wouldn't mind no. stopping at 40 and then pick it up again at 45. Right. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I told you that you have seen me, and yet you do not, yet do not believe me. All whom the Father gives me will come to me, and he who comes to me I will never cast out. For I came down from heaven, 
not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who has sent me, that of all whom he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. This is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Thank you. Now 45. Thank you. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and has learned of the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which came down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Thank you. Um, shall we? Um, yes. Uh, could you just read of uh, fifty-three, fifty-four, and then we will eat and drink. Thank you. Verse fifty-three. Jesus said to them, "Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you." Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Amen. Amen. So we say thank you, Lord Jesus. We take off your body. And thank you for the assurance in your word and through your Father of you bringing us through and raising us up to be with you. And we eat of your body with gratitude in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood that you mm -hmm. shed, your blood of the new covenant that you've made a way for all people, from the greatest to the least, to be your people, for you to be their God, to put your law of love and truth and righteousness by the Holy Spirit in our hearts and minds. We speak this into the hearts and minds of your Jewish people, Lord, all around the world. We say, Father, unto each and every one of us and our families, Lord, thank you that you said that you are the one who has forgiven our sins and you will remember them no more. So we drink this precious blood with such gratitude because it is the redemption. You paid the price and broke the power of the law of sin and death. You've taken away all guilt. You've removed every alienation between us and the Father. You've removed the wrath of God from us. We want to say thank you as we drink your precious blood in Jesus' name. Thank you, Shirley. If we could have the next song, that would be beautiful. Could we just have the first part of it? The Lauren Daigle one. There's actually two songs, so we just do the first one. Thank you. Thank you so much. So beautiful. Now, I believe the um, wonderful promise that we have is after the Sabbath, there was the Feast of First Fruits. And our precious Lord Jesus fulfilled this for us all. I want to speak this new life into Israel, into my Jewish people. I want to say thank you, Lord Jesus, 
in John 12, you said the seed had to go into the ground and die before the multiplication, before the resurrection, life can burst forth. And we know in um, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, we've got this beautiful depiction of, from Paul of Jesus willing to make, become absolutely nothing, emptied himself, died on the cross in obedience to his father. He was the obedient son who did not sin. He was the lamb, the Passover lamb that fulfilled all the requirements of the father. And the wonderful, glorious reality is when he was raised from the dead, he was the first of a great harvest. He was the second Adam. He was the new created Adam. And so you see, just as the death, this is from 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 23. Just as death came into the world through a man, Adam, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, Yeshua, Jesus. Just as everyone dies because we, we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Messiah will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Messiah was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Messiah will be raised when Messiah comes back. You know, when he says, I am the gate, he's speaking about being that gate. You know, where it speaks about the temple curtain was torn. We're told in Hebrews 6 that he's gone beyond the veil. He has, he's our anchor. He's our assurance. And that because he was accepted, and he is now our great high priest. So many beautiful scriptures in Hebrews 5 and 7 and 9 and 10. Just, I pray over this season, you can immerse yourself in this and become full of faith, full of encouragement, and be able to share the gospel, the true gospel of the kingdom of God. And, and a precious sister was sharing with me um, that in the ancient times where there was a battle, the uh, Romans or the Greeks, they would, um, a complete victory had been won. They'd send a herald back to their town, bang on the door of the, of the gates of the, of the wall and be allowed to come in. And they wouldn't tell a whole story about the battle. They just simply shout the gospel, the gospel or whatever that equivalent word was in their language. And they knew that meant there was a complete and definitive victory over the enemy. It was done. It was finished. And beloved, I pray for all of our hearts. We would know this to a deeper, ever deeper place of faith. And we can walk in this victory of Jesus' complete and total victory over all the powers of darkness. We're now going through this weekend actually here with our second um, focus on all the supremacy of Christ scriptures. We're going through Ephesians and Colossians and one, two, three, John, and we're praying through it. And you know, it just revives us. And I pray in the body of Christ that we can do this. We can set time aside and completely immerse ourselves in the word and hear back from each other the revelation, the words of knowledge, and then pray in the spirit from these things for Israel, for our communities, for our nations. So we're not looking at the problems we're trying to solve. We're actually decreeing, proclaiming, and declaring what God has already said and who we are and who he's calling his people to become. And Father, I just want to praise and thank you that we're nearly coming to the top of the hour. And I would love to make this proclamations of what some of our wonderful Aussie Anzac troops came up to the camera house of prayer and made these declarations. I don't believe this is just for Australia. It, they, they'd seen in the spirit, a bridge has been built. An opportunity has been given. 
A door has been opened. Restoration has begun. What has been achieved in the spirit has been established. No devil or demon can usurp what God has done in this place or where you are. No principality or power can thwart because God is sovereign over his own work. So beloved, let us be the sons and daughters of the light who are about our father's business, who hear his voice, do what he asks and see the fruit of his multiplication and increase. And I really believe with our Anzac, um, Australia, New Zealand, you know, we had this amazing watch with a beautiful New Zealand sister just after the Iranian um, attack. And there was three hours of worship of, that went on in Taronga, New Zealand. And there was an Aussie troops over here on the, on the watch um, and Zoom worshiping. And there was just such a breakthrough that happened in New Zealand. And I believe God is realigning his troops. So I want to declare this over America, over Israel, over what his divine purpose is in this next season. That um, we would see that even though we may feel that we have so little or we've achieved so little, that with God's grace, he will turn it around and bring it to be so much. This is the father who wants to bless. I pray for each and every one of you that you will be true friends of God as I pray for my own heart. I would not be a betrayer. I would not deny him. That wherever you're ministering, that you will have true friends come alongside you and support you and lift up your arms and pray for you. And I thank God for the ones God's put around us. And that he would give you individually some wonderful new brothers and sisters to really love and encourage you. Because as Jesus said, as love grows cold and all these things will happen in the earth, we need to have a core family that we can pour our love into and who can receive our love back. And we are coming forth in God's way and God's time. He says he holds us, he holds our life and our days. He holds us in the palm of his hand. And I pray, beloved ones, we will not fear. We will be like David. He said, I, I will not die, I will live. I will declare the praises of my God. We'll be those like those older ones in Psalm 92 who are flourishing in their old age in the house of the Lord. And that we will have a mindset of abundance and blessing because this is who our father is. So I bless you on the Shabbat. I thank you for being with us all. I think we're on the top of the hour and we need to say Shalom, Shalom. So do you want to unmute? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, uh, just, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, the, Carolyn has just mentioned that there are, uh, there are jets flying over and it's very unusual. I think we should just pray into that. Oh, please. I didn't see that. Sorry, Carolyn. Thank you. Okay, just...